Hi, my name's Martin and I'm a wanker. All men wank, okay? Even the Pope, perhaps. I was, a, I was considered a connoisseur wanker. For eight years I edited Loaded magazine, which I said as earlier, was deemed the, the lightning rod of objectification of the female kind. Sold millions of magazines. I was called a pornographer. By any sort of rational legal defence, I was not. We operated within very strict parameters. About 2004, this thing called the internet started happening, sort of obliterating my magazine sales because, you know, young men that were sort of spending three and a half quid to buy a magazine with girls with bikinis on, well, why the hell did they do that anymore? It's on the internet and it's all free. My business model was going out the window, but I was being accused by many vocal critics because, like, who makes porn? Nobody knows. But that idiot made loaded. I became a target, so I thought, well, I'll defend porn. Then I became a father and dragged me into the real world, and I began to question the allegations I'd heard for many years. Was loaded the marijuana that led to the heroin of Harpoon? Were we a nursery slope for darker desires? What was this doing to men? I wrote about this in the Daily Mail. Now, oops. At the time, this, this narrative took hold, and, and this, this was from David Cameron downwards. You know, the Prime Minister and the Daily Mail you know, declared war on pornography, and, and, they, and they looked to the internet service providers to be the solution. Technology got us into this mess. That can get us out of it. Worse than that, this, this dangerous narrative took hold that um, porn was turning young men into, into sexual psychopaths. And I've, I've always I've felt very protective towards the young men of Britain. I, I write a lot on masculinity now. They, I felt they were being severely mistypecast as kind of um, zombies. They were watching porn, which led to violent porn, which led to real-world violent sex crimes. I wanted to give men more, more credit than that. Channel 4 saw this article I wrote in the Daily Mail on the Thursday. Turns out they've been trying to make a TV show about this for a year. And we had the show signed off by the Tuesday with me as the front man. I've got no TV experience, I didn't have a fucking clue what I was doing. But I did know a lot about porn. I've been using porn since I was 10. I found my dad's biscuit tin under his bed. <laughs> the dusty razzles. Porn, okay, it's fine. Everyone uses porn. Oh no, porn's changed. How people get porn has changed. So we, we sat around the UK, we did a survey uh, to find out, are oh, they watching it? Yes, they are. 97% of 12 to 16 year olds are. So parents, wake up and smell the coffee. What are they watching? It's not razzle. It is violent porn, but it's not making everyone violent. What, if anything, is it doing? And most importantly, the most, high, most, the most difficult um, sort of hypothesis to get across, can porn be addictive? To find out, we conducted the, first, the world's first brain scan study at Cambridge University. We advertised for, for young men who felt their porn use was getting out of control. These were young men um, who'd gone from straight A students at um, GCSE to complete flunks at A level. They'd lost their jobs, some had got criminal records, um, one guy had to pull over and masturbate in his car, turns out he was outside of school, okay? He's now on the sex offenders register for the rest of his life. Another guy worked in a hospital and got caught wanking at work and that's it, he's, he's done for. It was starting to have a real effect and we're like, okay, so this isn't just, you know, people sort of masturbating all day. It, it can have real-world impacts. We put these guys, um, and myself, <laughs> it's a bit scary, um, through an MRI scanner, and we strapped them in, and they watched porn. And we looked at their brains in real time. At Cambridge University, Dr, Dr. Valerie Voon, um, head of this study up, had done lots of previous work on addiction. She knew what an addicted brain looked like, if it was addicted to heroin, to cocaine, to booze, um, to nicotine and even behavioural addictions such as gambling. But of course, as you know better than I, porn and sex addiction still isn't really taken seriously. It's, it's, it's kind of debunked as, as a, a construct, a 21st century malaise of the celebrities who get caught with their trousers down. You're not really addicted to sex. You just can't stop masturbating. You can't stop having sex. So, we met some real guys. Amazing young men. Callum was 19 masturbated 28 times in one day. I said to him, because I'm a bloke, what did that feel like? He said, it felt like being kicked in the bollocks. I said, so why do you do it? He said, I can't stop. For that moment, I feel high. Afterwards, I have the crash. Sounds like addiction to me. It's like you're chasing away the low with a fresh high, but the low is lower and the high is not as high. And this cycle was emerging. I got really close to this guy. His dad was two years older than me. 
they became a close friend. And in the show Porn on the Brain, it's on YouTube, um, the most amazing scene to get the message across that this is real. We were driving around his hometown of Oxford, and um, he had a very, very complicated um, relationship between pornography and what it drove in the real world, because this guy got loads of sex. He wasn't just sitting in his bedroom, he wasn't some, some, some loser who never got out, but his real world sex was driven by his porn template. So whatever porn he was into at that time, he was seeking it out like, like a machine in the real world. If it's anal, she's got a nice bum, she'll do. If it's Brazilian, oh, she's, she looks Brazilian. It was absolutely insane to watch the way his, his prescription was set by what he was watching in the real world. We were driving around Oxford. It was a really hot day like today. Hundreds of girls, university town, all in like, you know, hot pants. And I was, like, and I was filming him. I was sat in the front, just me and him. No, no sound crew because it was too much bullshit. He wasn't relaxing. He was showing off too much bravado. Got a camera like this. And he saw this girl. And he just went. And he slammed his car into a pub car park. He got out of the car. He ran across the car park. And he masturbated in the toilets. And he came out. And I've still got the camera rolling. He was crying. The guy was in a dark place. And I still get quite emotional talking about it because you know, I got really close to this guy. And it's sort of said to me that this isn't just, you know, a celebrity manufacture. This is real. Here's another guy we met. He's, he's also a close friend. I do a lot of public speaking with him now because nobody's got a clue what sex or porn addicts is like. You obviously work with them, but most people just don't have a clue. So I just, you know, I, I do a lot, of, a lot of speeches at feminist conventions, and I, I'm not a feminist, probably guessed. And, and I get him along, and I say, well, here's what a sex addict looks like. He's just a normal guy. This, this guy is the reason pornographers give porn away for free. Why do pornographers give porn away for free? Where's the money? Well, a small percentage turn into paying customers. They reckon about 9%. 9% of billions is a lot of money. It's either, it's either cam, cam, um, cam phone, no, what's it called? Webcam girls, or in, in, um, in Gaza's instance, it's um, the escorts. So it's all the adverts that are dropped around. If you spend a day uh, w um, understanding the business of pornography and how it works, it's really fascinating. The algorithms behind that are, are literally some of, the, it's some of the best software on the planet. You click on this, it works out within a second that you like this, but it's 5% more. And then you click on that, and that's 5% more. And in the end, you, get, you run out of novelty. The novelty is exhausted, and guys like Gaza were going and see, seeking... They altered porn sex, and the real girls that they hung around with either didn't want it or couldn't satisfy him. He had this template that he wanted this thing, so he was paying for escort girls. On his 18th birthday, to treat himself, he was strapped up and tortured by, um, in a Fifty Shades sort of way. He was whipped and harnessed, you know? And then, how do you go back from that, you know, to like saying, hey, fancy going to Pizza Express? You know, <laughs> these people were getting sort of moved on you know, in a way that um, hasn't ever been done in the entire history of human sexuality. You know, the internet is, 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 is rebooting the whole wire of what these guys want. And when they, run out, when they run out of novelty online, they're going offline to look for porn sex in the real world. I went to rehab, probably one like yourself, um, with these guys, and I spent a, an intensive weekend, one of the most emotionally draining weekends of my life, uh, working with these guys, and let me tell you this, when you, when you work with these people, you understand that this is real. And these are ordinary guys who've taken a wrong turning. I better shut up. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>